Hello, and welcome back to Pillars of Eternity. Now that we have the key... Let's open this. Or maybe we should go down he uh, over here first. Hmm. I wouldn't want to advance... The wait, store, wait, if possible. Me. What the? Second wind. Are you not doing anything? Hmm. Hmm. I think I was useless this fight. Um. Yeah, sorry, Alof. That definitely will lead us further. You, that you opened the door. I'm here. That will went swifter for sure. No, you. No, 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 you. This letter is fairly intact, though the parchment itself has been crumpled. Gister, I know that the temple buffs both great healing properties and that your back ails you still. Still, I will ask that if you are to indulge for the greater part of the day, you give over your key to the sanctum to someone else for safekeeping. This is not the first time we have been forced to wait to perform the day's rites, and Rectory's Oprika is often too far below to hear our knocking. And the sun shall break through the darkness, the new dawn arriving with the rebirth of the day. Rejoice, all ye who dwell in the shadow, who are broken and beaten. The winter soon comes to an end. Spring shall rise, bringing light and life to the world. Radiant light, radiant life, and thy soul shall find warmth in his arms. All creatures bask in his glory. The rays of his countenance bathe the world, bringing an end to the night, ushering in the day. Kneel before him and wonder at his benevolence, feel the warmth of his radiant presence. If thou art broken, he shall make thee whole. If thou art in darkness, he shall bring thee to the light. If thou art sinful, thou shalt be reborn. If thou art cold, his warmth shall bolster thee. How can the eyes so lonely, lowly and worn speak words of proper adulation? Thine eyes, whose gaze seek the sin in me, it still shows love. Thine hands, whose grip pulls me out of darkness. Thine ears, listening to my every prayer. Thine heart, bright as the dawn, giving me warmth when I am raw. Eophas, light of spring, sun of the world, thou givest me life and purpose. If thy heart be black, if thine intention be impure, thy life is forfeit. For he hath seen, he can see, he will see. Nothing is hidden from his glory. His light touches every corner of the world. Nothing is hidden from his sight. If thou dost thy work in the dark, if thou wouldst keep thine actions hidden, thou shalt be burned in the sun of the new dawn. Day comes soon, prepare for the dawn. Nothing is hidden from his reach. All right, then. Ah, okay, here goes another one. Oh, this one is long, okay. Galfatan customs can be primitive and unsophisticated to some. But all customs begin with ritual or superstition, so why should theirs be considered less than any other? If they are examined closely, Glenfathan celebrations stem from a deep and rich culture and all tie into their history in a significant way. The festival of the ancients, 
The festival of the ancients takes place during spring dawn and is a time to celebrate the Glanfatan setting in Ear Glanfat. It is a simple three-day ceremony that is mostly centered on feasts. These feasts are set up around the ruins scattered through Ear Glanfat. Wreaths made from tree branches and flowers are placed at the ruins and prayers are said to the gods, thanking, thanking them for health and prosperity. The cleansing. The cleansing started as a protest, recreating the hardship brought upon the clan Fatans by the Adrian colonists when they started settling in their wood. It has morphed over the years and is now used more as a game mixed with a teaching tool to inform young your Glanfatans about the history of their people. The cleansing takes place on New Year and Mid-Year and now acts as a metaphor for real events instead of a recreation of the events themselves. Zorib effigies are placed throughout the forest, hollow clay shells filled with sweets and gifts. The children then search the woods for the effigies and destroy them. Cleansing in the forest so they, Glanfatans, can move in and occupy the areas. After the area has been cleansed, they gather for celebration and feast for the elders and tell the young members the true story of their people's history. Holiday of the Black Tree A combination of a day of remembrance and celebratory feast, the Holiday of the Black Tree is held on the second day of autumn falling, when the trees are still colorful but losing their leaves and the land is becoming cold and dark. Glanfatans use the day to tell the story of the War of the Black Trees and remember those who were lost. During the morning, the adults hang elaborate garlands from tree branches. Uh, the garlands are made from red, orange and yellow flowers and represent the flames that swept through the forests of Eyor Glanfat, destroying everything in their paths. After a morning of fa uh, fasting and a reflection, the children are set to run through the trees, tearing down the garlands and bringing them back to the feast, decorating the tables with wildflowers, turning the horror of war into something beautiful. Then they eat, cheering the peace they now have with the Derwoodian people and toast to many more years of peace to come. Also of note in Glanfatan culture is their abundance of traveling customs. Being a semi-nomadic people, they practice customs to ensure their safety, safety while on the move. Traveling customs. If you are taking a quick trip, purchase a gift for someone you are visiting and leave it at your home. If something important is left undone, such as giving a gift to a loved one, you will always return to finish the task. If you are taking a longer trip, Leave remembrance of your trip, no matter how well you know the road. Drop some pebbles along the way or tie a ribbon to the tree branches. Mark your path away and you'll always have a safe and easy trip back. Evil spirits and dangerous creatures are everywhere in our world. If you decorate your cart with masks, they will scare them away any danger that might otherwise approach. But you must decorate your card anew every trim or every, the evil won't be fooled by your ruse. Portion of fleet fleet. Okay. Uh, okay. Wait again. Oh, right. The game minimized while I was reading. I have no idea why. Okay, I think we went through most of the space. There's a lot of those tiny encounters. Okay, you are doing this, you are doing this. It attacks for a lot, but we need to wait for it to spawn. The still dark waters are reflective as black glass. Let's follow the yellow light for now. You. You go first. Uh, Hi. 
use your spell. Okay, that was quick. Nope. No, you don't. You're doing fine. The Pilgrim's Fasting Vigil. Does any one of you need helmet? I can't wear any helmets. Okay, there you go. Okay, this will lead us more oops to higher level. Do I want that? Let's check the rest of this floor. The light rises from the bones as, as you approach. You have a moment to register the faintest image of a standing figure. Features a blur of mist or smoke before the world tools. It is as if you have stepped sideways and into a new life. You are racing down a flight of stairs following a weaving circle of torchlight. Your own panting breaths are loud in your ears. Panic and your robes alike fold your steps and you nearly stumble before a hand reaches out to grip your arm and steady you, a fellow acolyte who smiles encouragement as you reach the bottom. You run around and pass the shallow reflection pool that marks the lowest point of the temple, following the dark shapes of the older priests as they lead the way towards the narrow hole that leads to the vault. You pass one of the torchbearers as you go. The harsh illumination of the flames reveals a familiar face. For a moment, your awareness finds time and identity, and you think Veritan has joined you here at the bottom of the temple. In the memory, he glances at you for a moment and then looks past at someone else. I'll come back once they're gone, he's saying. You're being pressed along by the crowd and his words are growing faint. Just keep quiet, we can't take any chances. Inside the vault, golden relics gleam like welcoming stars. The memory twists, drawing you loose from one moment and plunging you into another like a flung doll. There is only darkness around you now. You think yourself blinded until the knowledge settles onto you like a cloak. The candles have all burned away. You know now too, with a sick certainty, that nobody is coming. There is a cracking noise somewhere to your left. A wet slurping gurgle and a ragged sob. You cannot see, and so you cannot know which brother or sister has fallen and which digs after what water a body may provide. You hear in the faint murmuring to your right the familiar cadence of prayer that you no longer recognize the words. You are too tired to do harm. The first is like fire within you. Your tongue is thick in your throat and every breath is a struggle that leads you strength from you. There is a light, they said, at the end of every bout of darkness. But this one does not end. The spirit releases you and you come back to yourself in pieces. Your vision clears and the vault around you is revealed once more. Cast in muted hues by the sickly illumination of the soul still drifting like fading fog. Fear wafts off the spirit in waves, praying at your own emotions. I'm sorry. I hope you find some peace in the next life. The spirit seems to withdraw into itself. You sense less of its fear and confusion as it recedes. But the soul still lingers. No matter how many times I see you staring over nothing, it doesn't get less weird. Gather the remains. You spend a few moments gathering up what you can find of the bones of the priests. It proves a heavy and gruesome burden, but you manage to recover them all. So 
Some of the gold leaf on the Israelis has stripped away to reveal the wood beneath. There are tooth marks upon one of the balls. The stand rocks unsteadily on its base. It seems that the mechanism is broken. The faint scratches upon the brickwork by the door hinges. Yes. There you go. Thank you. Ooh. Oh, I like that. And pry bar. Uh, is this one hand weapon? Yes. It's worth the fight. Why? But converts grace to hit. Yes, I will take it. It's faster. No, no, it's worse. It um. It is faster. And I prefer this type of weapons. I don't want to know where you, where you've put the remains. Oh, we are. As you step over the circle of candles, you hear a rattling clang from the wall nearby. A door slides open with a grinding rasp of stone. Ah, okay. The candles flicker gently as you approach. There is a gap above the altar, lined with broken glass, where a mirror may once have been set into the wall. The candles are still burning. Not bad for a dead god. What's this all for? Redemption. And they got this whole right for when you come of age. They take you by the hand and you descend through the temple with your eyes covered, and that's supposed to be like a wicked life. They don't tell you where you're going. <laughs> I was sweating like crazy when I did mine. They take you to that reflecting pool back there, and you're allowed to look at it so you can face your sins. Then you come out into this room and they uncover your eyes again and everyone's there to greet you, all your friends and family. It's like you've been redeemed. You light your candle, and it burns with the others. Never had a feeling better than that my whole life. Ader's eyes linger on the candles, and he seems for a moment to be a younger man. The candles are still burning. Not bad for a dead god. Then don't snuff them. It was nice to see those candles still burning. I figured they'd have gone out by now. Um, not here. I'm looking for a way out. Um, here. I think we managed to see everything. But where is this asshole? Vertan, okay. Vertan. You know where? No. Maybe at the Black Hound then. Did we visit? Yeah, yeah, there was this old, not old, the woman, pregnant woman. They are done. Where the hell did he go? In this.
Wait, do I know where he went? Uh, no. Mm, back middle. Mm. Okay, we must go south. That's all I know for now. He's not here, right? <laughs> it's a shame that I don't know where he might be. Based on that, uh, based on map. Because I thought he would wait for us outside of the temple, and I mean directly outside of the temple. On the other hand, when I was looking for you, for either, he was supposed to be next to the smithy, but... Or for Teal. Maybe it was Teal. Not you either. Nope. I just keep barting into houses because why not? Maybe we'll find him. I have no idea where we can find him. Oh, we all have our own stronghold. Oh, that's interesting. Yes, I'm taking whatever I can. No, he's not here either. on that no oh also Nonton right we've been to the I think he was here or here in this house. I'm sorry that I'm running like a headless chicken here, but this is what I get for not making proper notes. Nonton, there you are. This man and woman appear to have been deep in conversation, working at closing two bulging satchels. They move to embrace until the woman notices your approach and pauses, her smile faltering a little. Welcome. Can we help you? She looks to her companion, brows furrowing with confusion. Uh, do you know this woman, Nantan? <clears throat> uh, yes, I think we met in Waywood. I warned her about the bear, he inclines his head. Glad to see you've made it. Was there something else you wanted? You two seem to be in a hurry. Yes, I imagine so. <laughs> uh, we're packing for a trip, actually. I've been meaning to visit the Fines Bay and... Shooks at Nonton. Well, 
little intro if I think I've had my fill of this town. No, 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 just take your hand. It's time for some new scenery, he says. I know what really happened in that bear cave, Nonton. The color trains from Nonton's face. I uh, don't know what you mean. I told you the truth of it. Are you accusing him of something? Inbroid looks to Nonton, touching his arm. If this is about the accident, we're both grieving Perilous loss, but it was a wild animal's doing. Nonton shakes his head minutely. You see a tremble in his hands. What would make you suggest such a thing? Why did you do it? He was your friend. Nonton hesitates and then his expression darkness. My friend. He was a cruel enough man to his friends. You don't know him. You wouldn't defend him if you did. His hand falls to his sword belt. Nonton, wait! Ingrid raises his hand. I don't know what you saw in that cave, but this isn't what you think. Burley, my husband, he was as much a beast as that bear. I tried to leave the first time I suffered his temper, but he wouldn't have it. She looks away, expression pain. Nonton, he... <laughs> we met, and I knew I would find someone special, someone kind, who cared for me. Please, all we want is to leave this place, to start somewhere else. We... She looks down at the satchels. We have some coins saved up. You could have it, if you only let us go. Keep the money. Use it to start your new life. Ingrid blinks, surprised. Thank you. Truly, I, I, I'm i glad you understand. Only, he, he, take, take this, at least. I hope it brings you luck. She looks at Tunantan, smiling. We have a long journey ahead of us. Minor ring of deflection added. I wish you well on your tra own travel, stranger. We won't forget this. Oh, I hope you won't. Can I take your scene? And I can your... At the, and I can take your stuff, which is great. In 2626 AI, a group of farmers, while clearing farmland from planting, accidentally, accidentally knocked down one of the ancient Atra men hairs on their land. This innocent act drew the ire of the native population and started what would come to be known as the Broken Stone War. When it was finally over, several thousand colonists have been killed as well as hundreds of the Glanfatans. Even though the war was technically over, the Glanfatans escalated their attacks on the settlers over the next two years using vicious tactics and of many colonists, several military figures, an earl, and six stains dead. Unable to stop the Glanfatan attacks, the earls elected Earl Edrang Hadred to the position of Griff. Well respected and known to be a master of military tactics, he was tasked with dealing with the Glenfatan threat. Edrank fought with the Glenfatans, led by an Orlan named Regd, for the next two years. Neither side can gain the upper hand, on the other resulting in a tense stalemate between the two groups. Because of this stalemate, the hostilities slowly died off, and in 2631, the Derudian people signed a treaty with the Glanfadans. Regd would step down, the Glanfadans would stop their attacks altogether, and the Derudian people would leave the ruins alone. This treaty angered the nobility in Aether, as it brought to a halt the supply of artifacts. Edrank also tried to get the practice of slavery outlawed, but this was not successful. Because of this, the peace between the Dude and Air Glanfeld is uneasy and tumultuous. Small patches of rural violence still cropped up, but were easily dealt with, as neither side wanted another war. And here we have some coin as well. This bottle of sonar is half empty. Okay, so that deals with you. Da, 
there's a thing missing inside. Wait. Let's check it once again. Maybe I miss him here. Oh, of course I miss you here. Well met, friend. Berta smiles nervously as you approach. Think I've sorted out the worst of it. Arms starting on Huas. He hesitates. You were down there for a while. Did you find anything? His eyes start constantly about the ruins. Something you're nervous about? <laughs> no, of course not. Just <laughs> never good to linger around these places, that's all. Britain gives you a searching look. Did you find anything? You lied to me. What? Written grins uncertainly. I was clear about everything. There is involved. Is that what you mean? I did say there would be spiders. A and I'll pay you, of course, for the trouble. I will crack your head in two if you lie to me again. Bertan scrabbles fruitlessly at your arms. His eyes wide with shock. Oh, oh, wait, I don't know what you... He inhales sharply, expression twisting. Maybe I knew where you find the bodies. Is that it? I'm sorry. You left them down there. The color drains from Verton's face. He looks down at the bones, mouth moving soundlessly as he scrambles for words. Uh, how did you... <laughs> he shakes his head. No, Redrick's men, they did all that. It was me. Maybe I should go tell Lord Rhetoric what you've been accusing his people of. Gerton raises a hand, his expression pleading. Wait, no, you you can't, they'll kill me. Worse, maybe, it's why I needed your help in the first place. You don't understand, I tried to help them, I did. Every day, every single day, I went to that temple and I warned them. I told them that they were playing with fire and Redrick wouldn't be patient forever. And every time they would shrug it off. Like I didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> like it wasn't costing me coming in to try and help them. I could have been arrested right alongside them. What happened? Redrick sent word he was going to have them arrested. Drag them out, lock them up. They wouldn't listen. Directrix said they would be reborn if anything should happen, and she wasn't afraid. I convinced them to hide, at least. They have the vault full of old relics, gold and such. I thought, uh, I thought they could hide in there, and once the guards left, they would have something to sell for passage out of the Deerwood, back to Adir. But then I told the man that the priest had already gone. They ordered the temple sealed. I couldn't get in again. Virton shakes his head. There was nothing I could do. Edder's eyes are wide, disbelieving. <laughs> nothing you could do but tell someone. Get the town together, organize a rescue. I would have dug them out of my own hands if I'd known. There were some of the last decent four left in this hall. Now all we got left is people like you. Why did you send me down there? Because if Lord Frederick means to have the temple cleared, they would have found the bones eventually. They would know I lied to them when I said the priests left and I would hang. Virtan's shoulders sag. I don't know if Frederick would have killed them. Maybe they would be languishing in cells now. Maybe they would be off somewhere in the Empire and I would have a night's peace. I told you the way of it, Virtan says, his voice rough. I told you what happened. This is your turn now to make a decision. It's not too late to make amends. Virton lets out the breath he was holding. 
I'm sure that's true. It's been years. What am I supposed to do? Bury their, their bones. Try to lead a better life than you have so far. Peter looks at the remains. He runs a hand through his hair, letting out another red breath. I, I can do that. I can. I will lay them to rest. Try and, and do the right th by them. Somehow. Thank you, truly, for what you've done. Give me a second chance. I'll put it to good use. If not, I'll f come back here and rip you limb from limb. I'm too good for person. I'm way too good. Okay, but this is where I'm gonna end this part here. So for now, thank you very much. Stay alive and see you soon. Bye.